Geometry, Chapter 1, Section 7, the last section for the chapter. Um, in this one, there's 15 vocabulary words. We're going to go over all 15 words. Some of these words are more important than others, so let's just get started. Again, pause at any time to write down what you need. Uh, polyhedron, a solid with all flat surfaces that encloses a region of space. So just like we talked about, polygons have to enclose, have to be closed. Polyhedrons have to be closed also. So here's a bunch of examples of polyhedrons. Uh, notice that all the sides have straight edges and all of these surfaces are flat. A regular polyhedron is one where all of the sides are the same size and shape. So if you look at this first one up here, is it all the sides the same size and shape? Well, no, you've got octagons and squares and hexagons. So this is a polyhedron, but it is not a regular polyhedron. This one here, um, well, everything looks to be an equilateral triangle, so that would be a regular polyhedron. Oh, let's see, I'm right on top of this one. So how about this one? Are all the sides the same size and shape? Well, no, you've got triangles and pentagons. So this one goes back up top. So that is a polyhedron, but not a regular polyhedron. How about this one here? Looks like all of the sides are going to be pentagons, so that one's fine. And here we have one. This one's a little more tricky. You've got a pentagon, but this is actually a hexagon. So the yellows are hexagons, the reds are pentagons. So that's polyhedron, but not a regular polyhedron. Uh, this is another one where all of them are uh, the same equilateral triangle. And this one down here, all of them are squares. Notice on polyhedrons, we have faces. Faces are the sides. Edges, edges is this line right here between two faces and vertex are the corner of the little points okay so the vertexes are the points faces are the flat sur the yeah the flat surfaces and edges are the things that are basically lines here where two surfaces meet they form a line where three surfaces meet that's where you get a vertex Okay, so platonic solids, again, this one's not going to be as important that you know what a platonic solid is, but I'll just cover it because here's our, our guy Plato, and Plato's important, and since Plato's important, we'll cover Plato, platonic solids. So there are five types of platonic solids. Uh, these were all mentioned in his writings very exclusively, so some people actually study just these. So we've got tetrahedrons, hexahedrons, octahedrons, dodecahedrons, and icosahedrons. Um, tetrahedrons have four faces. Hexa, hexa means six for six eight faces. Octa means eight for eight faces. Dodeca means 12. Icosa means 20. So that's telling you anhedrin is three-dimensional shape. So just like you had with polygons, where you had a hexagon, hex means six sides, hexahedron means six faces. And then you can count up all the vertices and edges. So those are your platonic solids. And the hexahedron, since it's got six sides and they're all the same, we call that a cube now. Okay, here's our next one. We've got a prism, a face, an edge, a vertex, a base, and a regular prism. So we have prisms. Prisms are polyhedrons, three-dimensional shapes, with two parallel congruent faces. Congruent means same size, same measure. So we're going to have two parallel same faces. So in this one, our same faces are triangles. They are parallel to each other. So this top one is called a triangular triangular prism because it's got the two triangles that are parallel. This one, the top and the bottom sides are parallel and this is a one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is a hexagonal prism. hexagonal prism because the top and the bottom, the, the faces that are parallel to each other are hexagons. Again, this one's triangular because the triangles are parallel, hexagonal because the hexagons are parallel. This one, the top and the bottom 
are parallel and the sides are parallel and the front and the back are parallel, but they are all rectangles, so this is a rectangular prism. Okay, so we got a rectangular prism because all the parallel sides are rectangles. Hexagonal prism because all the, the parallel sides are hexagons. Triangular prism because the parallel sides are triangles. The faces, the faces are the flat surfaces, so the face on this is a rectangle. This is also a face, which is a triangle. The face on this is a hexagon, but then it's also got faces that are rectangles. And this one has a face that's a rectangle, face that's a rectangle. They're all rectangles. They're different size rectangles, but all the faces are rectangles. The edges are where they intersect, so these edges are these lines. The edges are the lines where two sides come together. The edges, again, are the sides where two sides come together. Okay. Um, vertexes. Vertexes are where three sides come together and form this point here. This actually has one, two, three sides at the bottom. This has one, two, three sides. So right here is a vertex. One, two, three sides. There's a vertex. So where they come together to form a point. Vertexes are points. So vertexes are points. A point. Bases, again, bases are the parallel sides, so this is called a triangular prism, so the bases are triangles. Hexagonal prisms, so the bases are hexagons. Rectangular prisms, so the bases are rectangles. And a regular prism means that the bases are regular polygons. So like this one, the sides are a, the base here is a equilateral triangle, so this would be a regular prism. Uh, if this hexagon had all the sides the same length, it would be a hexagonal prism, but it doesn't in this picture. So this is just a regular prism, not, or a prism, not a regular prism. This is a rectangular prism. It is not regular because um, otherwise it would be a cube. A cube would be a regular prism. So an equilateral triangle on the bases makes it a regular prism. Squares on each base on each side would make this a, or each Base, base would be a regular prism. Okay, and then we get into pyramid, cylinder, cone, and sphere. A pyramid. So pyramids, all faces intersect at one point. So face, face, and the back face all come up to this one point up here. And then except one face, which is your, your base. So you've got a base and you've got three faces. And you've got a vertex at the top and some vertexes along the bottom. Cylinder. Cylinder is congruent circle bases in parallel planes, so the top and the bottom have to be parallel, and they have to be circles. And yeah, I could rotate this, and then it would be the sides here. So bases aren't necessarily top and bottom. They are the parallel sides, so our bases are circles, and the circles are parallel. So this is a cylinder. Cone. Cone has a circular base and a vertex, so here's my circular base, and here's my vertex. And the surface up here is curved. And then spheres, spheres have all of the points in space the same distance from the center. So this radius, no matter where I put it on this sphere, would still be the same length. So sphere. We need to know the exact correct name for these. We do not call this a ball. We call this a sphere. Okay, and the last one, surface area and volume. Surface area is when you add up all of the uh, faces, the area of the faces. So this is a three by, first of all, let's start with this. This is a cube. And if I were to open this cube and lay it flat, this is what it would look like. And this square here is three by three, and three times three is nine. Um, hmm. I need to pick a color. How about nine? There we go. And this square would be three by three, so it's nine. And this square would be three times three times, so it's nine. And this square is three by three, so it's nine. And this square is three by three, so it's nine. And this square is three by three, so it's nine. And if I add them all up, one, two, three, four, five, six, I get six faces that all have area nine. So my surface area would be 54, and that the little two marks up here mean inches. So that's 54 inches for my surface area. Volume, if this were the same cube, that means that this would be a 3, and this would be a 3, and this would be a 3. So my height is 3, my width is 3, and my depth is 3. And so volume, you take it and you, um, the formula's right here, 
volume is equal to S cubed. S is a 3, so I'm taking 3 and cubing it. You can also think of it as length times width times height. And 3 cubed, that's 3 times 3 is 9, and 9 times 3 is 27. And the volume, uh, again, if these were inches, so it's got the two little tick marks to mean inches, this would now be inches cubed. And surface area would be inches squared. So you could say square inches or cube inch, cubic inches, or inches cubed and inches squared. So that's volume and surface area. And I think those were all of our vocabulary words.